Get away! Get away! Don't swat at it! Ow! I wish there were no more bees. I told you, it was a wasp, not a bee. Bee, wasp, what's the difference? All they do is sting people anyway. You'd fight back if someone was swinging at you. What if I told you that a lot of the food we eat is thanks to pollinators, especially bees? What are pollinators? Pollinators are the insects, birds, and other animals who carry pollen from one plant to another, helping them produce fruit and seeds. Insects are the most important pollinators. Without them, we wouldn't have blueberries, cucumbers, tomatoes, peppers, pumpkin, or squash. Not even chocolate. You were just saying that to try and make me feel bad about wishing them gone. You don't have to take my word for it. <laughs> okay, we know. What's that powdery stuff on the bee's back? <laughs> Guess it didn't take a shower this morning. <laughs> it's pollen. It's carrying it home in little baskets on its legs to feed its young. So that's why the bee's legs are so fat. It's getting pollen all over itself and the other flowers. So that's what they mean by the birds and the bees. The male parts of the flower need insects and birds to carry pollen to the female parts of the flower to create fruits and seeds. As a reward for delivering pollen, the insects and birds get food. Most pollinators just stop by flowers from time to time. Bees are pretty special. They get all the nutrients they need from flowers. That's why they're so good at their jobs. A busy bee has a big appetite. While it's active, a bee eats its body weight and sugar every two hours. That would be like you eating a cup and a half of sugar every minute. Wow, and I thought I had a sweet tooth. Just like bees, butterflies eat only nectar, pollen, and flower oils. They don't seem to have nearly as much fun as the bees, though. It's like that guy's eating with a knife and fork. He doesn't have any pollen on himself. When extended, a butterfly's coiled mouth is as long as its body, so it doesn't need to enter flowers. That's not to say that butterflies aren't pollinators or that flowers don't like having them around. Just as animals show off to attract mates, plants have evolved ways in which to entice different insects to drop by for a visit. So that's why they smell so good? Bees don't have noses, do they? I bet it's the flower's colors. No, then all the flowers would be the same color. Actually, it's the smell and the color. So we're both right. That's a first. The perfume of the flowers attracts pollinators. But not all flowers give off a smell. Butterflies don't like strong smelling flowers, while many flies like stinky smelling flowers that we find offensive. So plants have different smells to attract different insects. Then flowers are probably different colors to attract different pollinators, right? Thank you. We're here today to help our hot single flower find the pollinator of her dreams. And we have four contestants here in our studio. Contestant number one, what's your idea of a perfect date? How come I can't be the horror wasp? Get over it and play along. Okay, fine. My idea of a perfect date is dinner on a nice perch on a sunny day. Not too high up, though. I get scared of heights when I'm more than four meters off the ground. I need a flower who doesn't wear too much perfume and looks good in blue or violet. Thank you, contestant number one. Now, contestant number two. What are you looking for in a relationship? I'm nocturnal, so I'm looking for someone who's open to spending time together late at night. And I have to admit, I love a flower with a strong, sweet smell and a pale color. Interesting. Now, a question for contestant number three. What are your favorite hobbies? Mostly hanging out with friends and family. I'm from the largest insect order, you know. I've been practicing my flying, but I'm still not that smooth yet. <laughs> and our last contestant, number four. What do you think you have to offer our hot, single flower? Well, I'm quite a bit hairier than the other contestants, so pollen gets easily stuck to my back. I'm not shy of commitment, and unlike some of my relatives who live in colonies, I even have my own crib. Miss Flower, your decision? 
I think I'll take them all. Whoa, that was weird. So, how many bees does it take to do this pollination thing anyway? They live in small colonies of about 150 or 200 bees. This one colony could pollinate an entire greenhouse. None of the bees native to Canada are very aggressive. They're just trying to protect their babies, just like any other animal would. Do you know that this box could be rented out to a farmer to pollinate his crops? The number of bees and other pollinators is declining in Canada, so it's hard for farmers to grow large fields of fruits and vegetables without a little help. There are fewer bees? I wonder why. It seems they have tons of food to eat. Maybe they're getting sick. Or what if other creatures are attacking them? They might not be able to find safe places to build their nests. There are a number of reasons why pollinators are threatened in Canada, and you guys just named a big three. The pesticides we spray on gardens and lawns to kill weeds and unwanted bugs can be just as deadly to bees and other pollinators. Even in small doses, pesticides can really damage a bee's navigation system. It messes up their memory, makes it hard for them to find nectar. We should do something. What do you mean? Well, my dad says he's going to spray the lawn to get rid of bugs. But there are tons of other ways he can protect his grass. We could convince him to control pests naturally instead of using pesticides. I know a few other ways that we can help the pollinators. Plant a variety of native wildflowers of different shapes, colors, and blooming times to ensure bees have a full menu during the spring, summer, and fall. Allow natural vegetation to grow. Talk to your school, local farmers, and encourage everybody you know to do the same. We've learned a few ways to protect pollinators. Visit Hinterland Who's Who online and tell us about your ideas. You'll find tons more on the website about how to protect these busy workers. And remember, no matter where you live in Canada, wildlife is close by, so get out and see it.